Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to work on uh, a Atari 800XE uh, which has been uh, modified. I bought this uh, machine on eBay and the previous owner uh, started upgrading it but he said he just doesn't have the time to finish it. Uh, there are still a few things uh, pending like installing the uh, stereo speakers and then the amplifier. He already installed a few things in there which we are going to see soon uh, how much or how far he progressed. The keys are quite a bit yellowed so they definitely need to be retrobrighted. But also we can see some marbling going on on the keys which means this computer has been through a retrobright process before but uh, not much success so we need to finish that work as well. Uh, my intention is to complete the work. To, to complete the upgrade. This is an Atari 800XE, uh, which is Atari 65XE, actually, uh, on, on, on and relabeled and rebadged, which has been sold in Europe uh, to, 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 to ride the fame of the uh, Atari 800, which has been uh, widely successful in Europe. So this is, in theory, uh, just a 65XE. So let's take this apart. Uh, see what's inside and then we can determine uh, what are the next steps. After turning the computer over, the label on the bottom says uh, Atari 130XE, uh, which is, mm, is, is in conflict with the label uh, the badge on the front side and what should be inside. Right, so this is supposed to be a 65 XE or 800 XE if we follow the badge, but uh, this could be a mistake with the label, or effectively, it could be also uh, this computer isn't what it says it is. This is now definitely a 130XE, um, so I think we can conclude that the badge on the front is incorrect. It's also uh, interesting to see because this is a newer revision, uh, which has the 64 by 4 extension, and so this model has, uh, in theory, 256 kilobytes of RAM. One of the existing modifications is the addition of the ultimate 1 megabyte card, which by the name says, gives one megabyte memory for the computer, but it also comes with a plethora of configurations, uh, different operating systems, speeds, performance. And we have the Transkey 2 stereo board, or Tiki 2 stereo board, uh, which is not completely finished yet, so we need to work on this. And here is what we have to do. First of all, we have to unbend the pins, which are currently going to an RCA port, uh, so we are going to connect that to the amp internal amplifier. We also have to solder four wires to the start, select, option and reset uh, endpoints. And there is an optional LED which we could use to show whether this stereo mode active or not. What I'm going to do is wire it up properly, then also remove the RCA jacks, uh, the RCA ports, because I don't think I would like to use that. I would rather have the available stereo speakers in there. Uh, so I think I will uh, start disassembling the keys and prepare them for Retrobrite. And after that, when they are in the Retrobrite uh, bath, then we are going to uh, finish up the soldering and then remounting, or in this case, unmounting uh, some of the parts. So let's do this.
keys and the plastic is clean and ready to go for the retrofit process. I put them in this plastic bag so that I will get the uh, perox cream peroxide and the rest of the plastic actually is going to be submerged. What I decided to do is to use the ribbon cable connector to uh, straighten the pin. So this way I can straighten up all at the same time to the same level without much hassle. It is time to do some soldering, so for that we use these uh, four cables, we connect them up and then we are going to solder them to the appropriate place to uh, take the start, select, option and reset signal. It is time to put the board back to its case and as you can see the amplifier and the PS2 extension has been now connected so we are going to uh, find its place. These are the wires I'm going to use for the uh, stereo flag LED. We are doing a smoke test here, waiting for anything to go wrong. Uh, but the LED comes on, which means that the uh, stereo TK board is on and also it's in stereo mode. So we can do a real power up test now with the monitor connected and see whether we get any boot screen. And it seems the ultimate port is booting, and we are seeing also the cursor, so it's good. We can power it down and uh, we can continue with the assembly process. Interestingly, these plungers are the sim very similar, if not the same, what uh, we've seen in the Commodore 128D. I also noticed, and if you have a look on the uh, up top right corner, that this uh, membrane has been built in 2018. So I would guess that the previous owner replaced this one too. Since we already had the holes at the back of the computer, I thought that we should use it for the amplifier and also for the stereo jack output. Uh, I had to drill the hole a bit uh, just to make sure that the amp uh, knob can fit through. The speakers are mounted using hot glue, so they uh, have sufficient grip, but they also can be removed if needed without damaging the case.
I think that wraps it up for this episode. Uh, this Atari 800 XE or 130 XE was great fun. It was a good project. Uh, the keys are restored, so they are white. The ca uh, case is not as marbled as it was before. Um, the one megabyte ultimate card and the stereo pool key extension and the amplifier works amazingly well. I also bought this SIO2SD gadget online, uh, link for it in the description. So this makes it possible that you can use an SD card connected to the standard cassette port and then load um, effectively almost anything and everything onto the machine without much hassle. It is very similar to what you would use on a Commodore 64. What this device does brilliantly though that it provides you loads of configuration so it works with most 8-bit Ataris. To enter configuration you press shift twice and then from there you can modify the speed, loading speed. You can select from 16 options. You can also turn off the turbo loader, also configure device ID and also how the LEDs are working. Plus also you can set up the uh, startup mode of the device. I think this device is not going back to the shelf. It's going to stay on my desk for a while and then I'm going to have fun with it. Um, the game I played and you've seen in the video is called Yomp and it has been uh, created in 2007, so it's fairly recent. Uh, it uses amazingly well the stereo capabilities and the memory extension on this machine, so it is, is great fun. What can I say? Uh, this is probably one of the main reasons I love the 8-bit computers, uh, because they are endless fun. Uh, I really enjoyed working on this one. I really hope you enjoyed uh, watching the video. If you did, uh, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.